astronauts, it's me, Brandy, and welcome back to Astro Tarot Research. So, we have another pick a card for you guys today, and this week's pick a card is What Are People Afraid to Tell You? Ooh. So, before we get into the nitty gritty of that situation, I do want to remind you to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram at astro underscore tarot research and hit the bell to stay notified of future readings. So, let's jump into these piles. We have pile number one, we have pile number two, we have pile number three, we have pile number four. So let's not waste any more time. Just sit back, relax, and choose. Hey, pile number one, let's get started on what people are afraid to tell you. We have the moon, we have the devil, we have the seven of cups, the Magician, and the Ace of Pentacles. Okay, so let me take everything in here. Anyway, so what I'm getting from this is that people are afraid to tell you that maybe, <laughs> I don't know how to express this, but maybe sometimes the way you express yourself is either a little bit intimidating or scary or possibly they feel like your emotional state or like even mental state can have lead you to some really bad habits and they're worried about how you may be prone to doing things which are bad for you in the long run. So, you know, short-term pleasure, long-term pain. So anything that's like drinking, smoking, toxic relationships, you know, etc. right? So that's something, that's one interpretation of these cards. The other interpretation is they're afraid to tell you that they're believe that you can be kind of hard to read and that they're not sure when you are being 100% with them because the moon is something that's like a lot of hiddenness and then we have the devil which also can represent manipulation and lies. So they're not sure what exactly is the truth um, I don't know if it's a facade, but they just, maybe they find it really difficult to read you, okay? So that's something that they don't know. They don't know when you're like being really genuine with them or if you're hiding something. It, it could just be your general vibe. Um, sometimes it's like that. And then they're afraid to really express any sort of negative emotion in your direction or anything that could be perceived as having to do with I would say control like it, it they are afraid that like if they express um, some sort of emotion that it may be interpreted interpreted as them trying to like control you um, when really I feel like this is just more of a concern thing but it's not like they're they like it's not like, oh, they're, they're like, oh, this person is unstable. Maybe that's the most extreme interpretation. But they feel like, okay, whenever I have something that this person may not like to hear, this person um, may not react in the way that I want. So they're afraid that you're going to, like, bite their head off. But the thing that they, I guess they want to tell you is they're just concerned about the the addictions or whatever or anything that, seems like unstable or anything that seems short-term pleasure because I do get the seven of cups to represent like drinking, getting high, um, being caught up in a fantasy. So it could be like anything, like I said, obsessiveness, like with, like if you're in a relationship and you're caught up in the fantasy of that or caught up in like the love of that. Or it's like, okay, we need you to snap back to reality, like not taking care of what needs to be taken care of. So they're afraid that you may get caught up in things and that feel good but don't have good long-term effects. So that's something that people are afraid to tell you. 
I don't know if that's necessarily something that you have struggled with or even if it's just a way of thinking because sometimes we get the moon for thinking and the devil can be like obsessive thoughts and this seven of cups can be like, oh, I have a lot of anxiety. I spend a lot of time thinking about what the, what can, what bad things could happen here, what bad things could happen there, what bad things could happen in this thing. Like this combination of cards is like anxiety ridden. So maybe they're afraid about expressing that they're worried about your frame of mind and how you perceive things and it can possibly be a little bit more negative sometimes or even just like they feel like it's causing you a lot of stress or worries okay or unnecessary stress and worries or un just unnecessary anxiety and feelings of like maybe possible depression or possible just more confusion or struggling to make decisions so another thing that the magician and the ace not another thing but with the magician and the ace of pentacles in plies is they're afraid to tell you that that's interesting because it's almost like this card i would get it's like potential to like work on something that can go far so it's almost like they're afraid to tell you that maybe i don't know it's almost like being one track minded or like they want you to keep your options open. Maybe they feel like you're working too hard at one particular thing and they're afraid to tell you that maybe there's other opportunities out there because it looks like they they see that you're working towards something. And with the devil card here, I do get that to be like, sometimes that's like a workaholic type energy, like being like just nose to the ground or just like really grinding away at your work. And so it's almost like they're afraid to tell you that, hey, like you don't need to just focus on these small things. Like you can focus on other things. There's other opportunities out there for you. Um, there's other options available to you. Like if you if you're finding you're not getting success in one area, then move to the next. So it's almost like they're afraid to like discourage you from because they feel like it may discourage you from doing what you want to do but they're just saying hey there's other options um they don't want it to come off like they're not being supportive and that's something that these that people around you are like afraid to tell you they're like oh i'm afraid if i mention that i see this person working really hard on this one thing um or two things or three things or like whatever it is that you're working on or working towards and they feel like okay this person is budging not this is not going anywhere They've like telling you to expand that radius and to let you know that you have potential to do other things in other areas of life, even if you don't believe so or if you don't have passion in it. They feel like other areas in life could be or other areas or interests could be either more lucrative, more fulfilling, um, have more long term stability towards it that you would find more intrinsic value in it it's just something that you're working towards and I, I it could be job related it could just be a goal that you have but people feel like you're putting too much time and energy into it and so that's something that people are generally afraid to tell you and this could also be kind of towards even partnerships because we do have the seven of cups and I do kind of get that a lot for somebody having like a lot of options romantically. And so if, if you're still the type of person to just kind of like date one person at a time or like focus on one person, people are like afraid to like mention that you have a lot of options available to you. They're like, don't get caught up on this one person. Don't get caught up on this one situation. Like expand your reach. Like it's, you have plenty of time. A, you have infinite amount of experiences that you can have. And so that's something that people are a little bit more afraid to tell you. They just think that you're a very, very creative person. And they really want you to expand your horizons is the main message that I'm getting. 
for the second half of this. Like they just really want to to expand whatever whatever area of life that you're working in, whether that's like dating, whether that's like, oh, I need a different job, whether that's something like, oh, well, I need to focus on, I'm trying to think of something else right now. My brain's uh, blanking. Like if you wanted to buy a certain home, but it's becoming a difficult process, they're like, okay, well, buy another home. Like they're just saying, don't focus on one thing. So um, that's something that they, are, are like a little bit uh, afraid to tell you. That's the main message of this reading. I don't want to keep blabbing on and repeating the same thing like 50 billion times that um, what people are afraid to tell you. That's mainly it. They just kind of like think more highly of you. They don't want you to like hurt yourself, damage yourself. They want you to have a, a more focused or positive um, mindset. And they want you to expand your horizons to what's out there because you have the potential to really create something solid and to have something of value and healthy, and healthy um, whether that's mindsets, healthy boundaries, healthy um, financial health. They just feel like you have potential for so much more, okay, than what's going on right now and that you should just kind of expand what you're doing or focus on something else or try something else. That's basically it. So that's what I have for you, pile number one. Let me um, know what you think of the reading and I'll see you next time, au revoir. Hey, pile number two, let's get started on your reading and see what are people afraid to tell you. Queen of Cups, the world, Queen of Swords, the Two of Wands, and the Page of Pentacles. Okay, so. I'm gonna be honest and say the first thing that came to mind, because we are next to this Queen of Swords and the World card, is that people may feel like, are they afraid to tell you that sometimes you may come off as a bit of a know-it-all? Or like, you know, been there, done that, experienced that. Um, especially if it comes to anything that's like dealing with partnerships, or um, personal relationships. They may feel like you are trying to help and give advice, but it's coming off like, oh, well, you should have done that, and you should have done this, and you should have done that, and da da da, da. It, it, For them, it can come off kind of like critical or negative, and that's just one interpretation, right? So that's something that people may be afraid to tell you if you have a personality where if somebody's coming up to you and they're telling you about like a, a dating experience or experience with their partner and your automatic uh, response is to try to, you know, help solve the, the issue. They feel like they wouldn't mind if it was more of like a listening ear rather than kind of giving advice towards situations. That's one interpretation, as I said. Another thing that this could possibly be is with the Queen of Cups here and the World card, it really comes off as to be like, they may feel you have a more melancholy mood sometimes or a more pessimistic perspective. Because when we get the Queen of Cups and it's like something somebody's afraid to tell you, you know, people aren't usually afraid to tell somebody something positive. So when we get the Queen of Cups, it's almost like somebody's emotions can come off like either they are just kind of very, very guarded. They have this wall up, which makes sense because we have the Queen of Swords as well, that they can be very like cold or distant from people and they're not willing to open up. Um, or it could be the opposite, but I doubt it's the opposite with the Queen of Swords here. The opposite is like somebody's very, very moody and they can be very self-destructive, which, you know, that's a little bit more like the first pile, which is a little bit more um, self-destructive there. But this is more like, okay, this person seems so guarded, so hard to know. Um, they're always like pulling away. They feel distant from me. They won't let me in. So that's another thing. They, they feel like you won't let them in. That's something that people are afraid to mention to you. And then the two of wands here 
and the Page of Pentacles. Let me just take this all in. Sometimes I get the Two of Wands to be like somebody who's waiting for something. Um, I get it for the Three of Wands too, but like the Two of Wands as well. And when we have this, it's almost like people are afraid to tell you that they feel like you spend your time and effort waiting for things that don't have a big payoff. Um, whether that is, you know, working at a job that doesn't pay you your worth whether that is putting a lot of effort into a relationship and they don't give you your dues back, whether that is, you know, focusing on, you know, a business and it's not going your way, or some other thing that you may be involved in potentially. So that's something that people are afraid to tell you, that you may be overly optimistic about what it is that you're expecting, but they don't think that what you're getting for the amount of time and um, that you have tried to like calculate and do things in a way that is smart and etc. is not up to par with what you are receiving back. Another way this can be interpreted is that for people who may be in a leadership position is people may feel like you aren't delegating enough because the page of pinnacles likes to do things themselves. So they may feel like you, they want you to step into the leadership role more because it kind of feels more like being a, you know, a buddy or being on the same playing field um, as everyone or having a sense of just like lack of guidance. It's kind of like, you know, you have some parents who try to be their kid's friend or something like that, um, which can be good to an extent, but there should be boundaries. But they feel like it, like I said, this is for specifically for the people in leadership positions. They feel like the, <clears throat> you, um, put yourself on the same level as other people uh, but you shouldn't because it's not um, working for them because they feel like they need more guidance, okay? And maybe more reassurance. Another thing that this could possibly be is that they want you to step outside of your box and to try new things because the Queen of Swords is somebody who is always experimenting especially when it comes to her looks. Um, I always get Queen of Swords people and they're always the people who are like always changing their wigs, always changing their makeup, um, always trying to you know switch up their style a lot. They play like all these different um, roles, I guess, ide identities within themselves and how they present themselves to the world. So it could have to do with they wouldn't mind you like experimenting with a new look or a new style. Um, they may just not be currently feeling your current style. I don't know. That's It's a really small thing, but it, I do want to mention it because I do get the Page of Pentacles for specifically having to do with like wardrobe things and styling. Um, same with the Two of Wands. If it's like next to it, it's like expressing yourself as an individual. And one way to express yourself is obviously with the way you present yourself. So they may be like, oh, I, I wish this person would kind of dress this way or do their hair like this because I think that would look really good on them. But they don't want to come off like insulting or something like that. I mean, that happens all the time, right? I, um, I used to watch the show What Not to Wear. And it was where you had people who kind of dressed in a way that wasn't flattering for them. And, you know, they would have friends or family like nominate them to be on the show. And of course, they would always be kind of like a little bit offended at first, but at the same time, they're like, well, I'm fine, I'll switch up my style, I'll do this, right? So they may, they may feel like they're afraid to tell you that because they don't want you to be offended, and they're like, okay, well, I really do think this person is a great, beautiful person, but I feel like they're wearing and doing things and presenting themselves in a way that's not flattering. So that's something that um, some people, for some of you, may be afraid to tell you. I'm trying to see if I can pick up anything else from these pile of cards here. 
Another thing is, if we have these two cars together, sometimes it's like somebody's failing to act because twos represent decision making. And so it's almost like you're refusing to make a choice or make a decision. So people may feel like you're a little bit indecisive sometimes. So that may be something that people are afraid to tell you or like you're being too cautious with like jumping into whatever it is that you want to go for. That's also a possible interpretation that I don't know why that didn't come up first for me. But yeah, 100% people may feel like, wow, this person is taking their sweet time to go after this dream of theirs and they should just go for it. Um, or they're, they're spending their time saying, I want to do this thing. I want to do that thing. Um, I want to do this thing. And it's like, this person's all split up. How are they going to accomplish this thing? Um, there's another perspective where it's like, they're wondering just how committed you are to maybe even accomplishing your dreams or your goals or getting your responsibilities done. And then another thing people may be afraid to tell you is to, like it goes back to before where they want you to let people in because they feel like, oh, maybe this person is afraid of judgment. Maybe they're feeling like a little bit insecure. So for some people, you may be coming off a bit insecure and that's something that they may be afraid to tell you, okay? Because the two of wands is a card that's usually bold and just kind of goes for it. But if it's something that people are afraid to tell you, they may be like, wow, this person just um, really seems to lack that confidence. And so that, that, that may not be the case, but they feel like you may be coming off that way. So that is what I have for you, pal. Number two, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, give feedback, whatever you wish to do. And thank you for watching. Au revoir. Hey, pal. Number three, let's get started on what people are afraid to tell you. So we have the ten of cups, the four of wands. I'm not going to read that reverse because it just wouldn't make any sense for this reading. Um, we have the six of pentacles, the hermit, and the emperor. So... Interesting. It looks like what people are kind of afraid to tell you is they feel like that you may be putting on a facade of happiness um, just because we have two cards here representing like expressing happiness and joy. And usually when we have this in a way where people are making some sort of more critical thought or um, a thought that's, you know, a little bit harder to hear or they might be afraid to tell you, it's because they feel you know, uncomfortable saying it. And usually people aren't going to be uncomfortable saying compliments, right? Um, maybe, but not most of the time. Um, but this is saying that they feel like either, how I said before, they feel like you're pretending to be happy when you're not, or they feel like you're someone who doesn't get out as much or doesn't experience as much happiness and fulfillment as they should. And then the, the third interpretation, which it's like slipping my mind right now, is that you may be using material gains in order to get some sort of pleasure, self-gratification, some sort of happiness here. Or they may just feel like there's a, a lack of connection too, because uh, we have the hermit here as well. And if they're afraid to tell you something that they feel like, oh, I don't feel like I'm included or like I'm involved in your life or that you truly like care for me, the hermit's like somebody who's kind of pulling away a little bit. And so they feel like they may not get that support from you, especially when we have the six of pentacles. All of these cards could definitely indicate support, feeling a lack of support, um, pulling away and feeling like they've just kind of been left in the dark or left out of your life and they, they aren't involved and they don't get to see the day to day and everything. Another way to interpret this is people may sometimes be afraid to tell you that you may be like overly optimistic or that you're someone who is either more of a giver than a, than you give more than you receive or you take more 
than what you give. It's possible it's both ways. Like they, it, it depends on, you know, your own situation, but it's gonna apply to one of those scenarios where they feel like, okay, well I'm giving this person so much time and energy, but they give me nothing. I feel like they don't give me as much as I want back. Uh, or it could be the opposite where they're like, oh, I think this you may be taken advantage of. You may be too generous with people. Like you need to stop being so, so much of like a pushover in a way. Okay. Cause even though the hermit is not a card that's like typically associated with wealth or whatever, I have found the hermit card to be like very generous. Like if I get the hermit to describe somebody, I'm like, oh, if I ask somebody, if I ask this person for something, they're usually going to give it to me, right? That's generally like the, the hermit. They're, they really like to offer what they have to you, even if it's like the shirt off their back, okay? And then that aligns to the Six of Pentacles. Also a card about having a lot and then giving things away. So there may be an element where, like I said, they feel like you're giving too much or they feel like they're, they're getting too little from you. So the Emperor here can be a card in which it can be very stubborn. You know, the emperor as a, a sort of criticism can usually be this person is too argumentative. This person may be too arrogant. This person may believe they're always right. Or something along the lines of where they may feel like you can be very stubborn or like you don't take other people's uh, opinions into considerations or like you just want to do things your way. Um you know, without having to have any other opinions about anything. That's, you know, that's something that they may be afraid to mention where they feel like, oh, this person's so hard headed. Like this person is just very much, you know, my way of the highway. And, or they may feel like you, the opposite where they feel like you're listening to the wrong people where they feel like other people are just giving you bad advice or maybe you're interpreting what they're saying wrong or, you know, there's some miscommunication things going on here. That's possible. Or like this, this can also come up if you're like overthinking things, overanalyzing things, um, thinking too deeply and just, it's just may not be that serious. Uh, so small interactions just happen to mean like a lot to you. And then people are just like, whoa, I didn't know that meant so much to, the, to you. And, and they may be taken aback. Um, it also kind of reminds me, what's that story of like the emperor's new clothes? And, you know, the emperor was known for wearing like, you know, super cute designs. And then one day, you know, his advisors kind of like tricked him into wearing, you know, just appearing naked or something like that. And he basically humiliates himself, right? So it kind of goes back into what I was saying, how they may feel like you are not listening or are not taking into consideration um, any other person's thoughts or advice on a situ on situations within your life where you solely rely on your own discretion and thought process. So that's something that people may think about you. And I guess the reason that they have an issue with it is because they may feel like you don't make the best decisions. Um, that's the only reason they would have a, a, a a thing, a, a thought like that, right? The generally you don't worry too much about people if you feel like they make great decisions, but they feel like the decisions that you make for yourself are, you know, kind of harmful towards your long-term happiness or even short-term happiness. Like they feel like you could live a happier existence if you just gave someone else's, you know, thoughts or advice like a try or something like that. It could be dead wrong, but um, that's their, that's, that is what something that they are afraid to say to you. Another way is this could be is sometimes it could be like this person gives with like something attached. Like it's never like, oh, I'm just doing this for the sake of doing this. It's like, I did this for you. Now you owe me. So that could be a criticism if you're like that. If you're not like that, then obviously disregard the, say, the, the statement. But that is something that these cards can 
represent. But to me, it doesn't look like you're easily impressionable. It looks like it's the opposite, where you're hard to, um, I guess, be imp impressed on, okay? Where they're like, okay, it's hard to imprint uh, an idea with you. Like, you just seem like, okay, no, you're not going to just listen. And um, I'm trying to think of anything else like this, the main criticisms that are like coming here or the main things that they may be scared to kind of like tell you or like they, they, um, they may want you to focus more on your health, not only just mental, but physical as well, just because the hermit and the six of pentacles here, um, and the emperor as well, it, it all kind of comes together with having to do with health since the hermit represents the sign of Virgo. And then we have pinnacles that represent the physical body. And the emperor likes to take a critical look at their physical body. So they may feel like, okay, this person, I'm, I want, I wish they would consider things um, involving their health differently. Okay, take a different approach to that area in life. And then... Lastly is basically what I said before where they feel like you may not want to reach out to them Even if you need help they may feel like okay You're the type of person to think that you're gonna handle everything on your own And so they wish that you would ask them for help. So that is what I have for you pal number three um, Let me know what you think and I will see you guys next time. Au revoir. Hey pal number four Let's get into what people are afraid to tell you Queen of Pentacles, Knight of Cups, King of Cups, Five of Swords, and the Eight of Wands. Okay. So for me, it looks like people are kind of like afraid to maybe like open up and be maybe honest or vulnerable with you um, about their, you know, issues and things that they may have going on in their life. Only because they feel like you'll you might uh, shut them down or like come at them from a lot of different sides. That's um, the main message. They they feel like it would be like you may have a bad reaction to what it whatever the message is um, that they're uh, they want to tell you. So they're basically afraid of telling you about certain maybe decisions that they have made that may have been dumb decisions or decisions that they know you may not agree with. And they're just kind of like, oh man, if I tell this person, um, they, they may criticize me for that. They may criticize me for this. Um, but they, it mainly surrounds possibly love life, personal relationships. So people are afraid to tell you about things that, um, involve connections with other people so it may not even be a personal relationship it could be like oh my acquaintance said so and so to me and they may not want to tell you because they may feel like okay this person will either you know you know fight so and so or <laughs> or they'll say well you should have said this and this to so and so and da 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 so they're just like okay i don't want to have to um hear any sort of feedback that um may not be, you know, pleasing to me to hear, right? They're, they're like, I don't want to hear some, anything that's going to be deemed as anything other than validating. And so they may feel like you are going to react in a way that um, doesn't validate their experience. So that's something that they may be afraid, that people are frequently kind of afraid to open up to you about how they feel. And then this can also be romantically as well. I didn't mention that for any of the other piles, uh, but this lets me know that people may be afraid to express romantic feelings. Only mention that because we have the King of Cups and the Knight of Cups. Um, so that would be quite a, a big signal towards romantic feelings here, uh, which is some, you may have someone or some people around you who are interested. It's seeming like it's like more than one with this eight of wands energy and they may be afraid to express those feelings towards you and they just don't want to be rejected that's pretty much how that goes right 
Other things they're afraid to tell you would be they feel like they feel like that you may be the type of person who may either flaunt their wealth because sometimes I get the queen of pinnacles. If it represents something that's people are like, oh, that's a little bit of a um, a little bit of a bump or a little bit of an irritation or something that's not flattering, people we usually think that the Queen of Pentacles is like very uppity, like very like um, upper echelon or even like snooty. That's a, a re reaction for some people with the Queen of Pentacles. So they may feel like, oh, this person is really high maintenance. Like this person likes their luxury. They like their goods. They like this and that. And they're afraid to tell you that they're like, oh man, you might be a little too materialistic. You might be obsessed with um, trying to impress others with things. You might be coming off like you have poor money management skills. They may feel like that you're acting sort of like above everyone else, like you're pretentious or something. That's something that can be more of a harsher criticism, but I have seen that, so I do want to mention it, okay? So I don't want you guys to be like blindsided. On the other hand, this could represent somebody being very stingy or kind of boring. Like they feel like, wow, this person really just does the same thing every day, in and out, um, nothing exciting going on. They have a pretty like dry personality. So that's something that they may feel like, wow, that you need some excitement in your life. You need to like spice it up. You need to try something different. You need to go out here and, you know, start dating if you're not in a relationship or spice it up in your relationship or get some new hobbies or find something that you're passionate about or that you love doing. That's something that people will definitely have thoughts about when it comes to you or or if not that, then let's continue on to some other interpretations, which I'm getting from these cards. Another possibility with the Knight of Cups and the King of Cups is you may have a personality that's prone to be like a little bit moody. Like people may be like, oh, I can't, I don't know. I don't know what kind of mood this person is going to be in. Are they going to snap at me? Are they going to be nice to me? Like, I don't know. Um how this person is going to be today. So they may feel like, wow, this person's mood is so hot and cold. Um, one day they're so open, one day they're so closed off. Um, one day they're so happy, the next day they're like very sad or angry or something like that. It's just hard to be in tune with you and your feelings. So they may feel like, wow, this is a person who may not be uh, as emotionally stable as I would like, okay? So they may be like, wow, they, or, or this is something that happens with these two cards. The emotions become too overwhelming. And so now people are like, this person is so emotional, okay? This person is so dramatic. This person is like, <laughs> this person is so, everything's over the top. This person gets way too anxious. They get too fearful. Um, they get upset so easily. They get a little bit hysterical. Um, that's something that can also be quite possible. And, and how these cards are present, presenting themselves. And lastly, there's, not lastly, but uh, lastly for this kind of coupling with this kind of here with the Knight of, not the Knight, with the Knight of Cups, the King of Cups, and the Five of Swords, that can also be a connection with being a little bit more uh, manipulative emotionally. So I don't know if they think, oh, this person is emotionally manipulative. They may be more like, I don't know if this person is being completely honest with me about how they feel. And that's something they may be afraid to tell you. They, they may be afraid to be like, oh, are you just saying this to be nice to me? Or are you saying this because that's how you actually feel? So they may feel sometimes like, if you're a person who's very positive, if you're not like, oh, I'm dramatic and da-da-da-da-da, if you don't have any of those traits or anything like that, then this is somebody feeling like, 
oh, this person may be so like optimistic, so much on the bright side that it doesn't seem genuine. Like they don't seem like um, they're really giving me that true, raw, honest answer. They're always trying to put a positive spin or something. And they're always trying to regulate my emotions and try to make sure that I don't overreact. So when you try to regulate someone's emotions, you kind of, um, you put a little bit of sugar on what you're going to say to them. You're like, okay, I think this person is very sensitive, so I'm gonna phrase things in a way to make sure that they aren't taking things too personally. So they may feel like, oh, I think this person's trying to manage my emotions. I think this person is not giving it to me straight. And that's something that people would be afraid to tell you because sometimes they're like hey i just want the i just want you to give it to me straight i just want you to like give me that harsh truth and they're not getting it from you are they maybe getting too much harsh truth it's hard with these piles because the knight of knight of cups is so hot and cold that they can do both sides but it's like they float to two extreme ends where one side they're like oh, i'm giving you that harsh truth and the next side they're like oh well I don't know that that does seem like a good idea I think you should go for it like do your best but really you think the idea is terrible so they can float through two different sides they're that extreme with the knight of cups so that's something to think about when it comes to those cards and there's interpretation I wanted to give for the eight of wands coming here but it's like right on the cuffs of my brain here hold on guys give me a second to think about this where they want to, I think with the knight, sorry, with the eight of wands, what happens is, is they may feel like you could be a little petty. Um, and I only say that because it's next to the eight, uh, sorry, the five of swords. And when you have that combination, it's like you may say some quick petty like remark and then just keep it moving. And... Another thing this could possibly be is it feels like you may rush into things and not consider uh, the feelings or thoughts of other people. That's something that is quite possible. They feel like sometimes you don't take them into consideration. And then they may also be afraid to tell you that they feel like you might jump into things in general too fast. Like you just kind of go full steam ahead. You are very, very impulsive. And they're like, whoa, like um, you have a lot of great ideas. You're really smart. You're, you know, you're very hardworking, creative and loving. And they see all of that. But they're like, man, sometimes you need to hold your horses because I don't, they're like, I don't think you have a, a, a real solid plan for this. Um, or like, I don't think you know quite what you're getting into. Like people have those, those worries when it comes to you. Okay. They feel like this person is going to get hurt because they're jumping into things too fast. All right. So that's something that people are a little bit afraid to tell you. They're like, don't get ahead of yourself. Like, don't, don't jump the gun. All right. So that is everything I have for you, pile number four. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram and let me know what you think. And I'll see you next time. Au revoir.